Hey guys, welcome to another Legacy Enchantress video. This is Spatula of the Ages. Um, so, the last video I think that I posted, I think I recorded one and didn't end up posting it, where it just went free to. It wasn't very interesting. So, like, if I sound confused about whether I said something before, that'd be why. But um, in the, the last one that I think I actually posted, Volume 16, um, kind of went over like the theory of the deck so I'm going to sort of assume that like you're basically familiar with at least Enchantress in general here um, so the version I'm running today is a Witch House hybrid so like Witch House was running Living Wish and was like uh, almost mono green and focusing more on like Doom Wake than on like uh, the white cards um, this is sort of a hybrid where it's like also trying to utilize Invocation so we're going four colors um, aided by Abundant Growth and Utopia Sprawl, and then just running like a lone tropical island with five fetches. Um, so we're trying to get the best of those um, different versions, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, the list I'm running today only has three wishes, so I'm not trying to like overdo the wish targets. I've got ten right now. Um, Dimwake, Argothian, Caracas, and Emrakul are like the most common ones. Um, in terms of your answers, you've got Gaddick Teague, Knight of Autumn, Wicker Bow, uh, Fairy Macabre has been alright. Um, it does give you a little bit more game in some of the worst matchups, namely your Animator and Ant. Um, Aegis is like an enchantment uh, wish target. I'm not so sure about this slot right now, since with only three wishes, like making sure that you can turn them into enchantments not quite as important. And our enchantment count is 31 now instead of 30, so I don't know, maybe, I don't know if that can be something else. Maybe I could even, like, switch it to a Corsair crew fix. Okay. Um, the non-wish sideboard cards are in the Eye of Chaos, Back to Basics, the Chokes, and to and a uh, Seal of Primordium. Um, and, like, I don't yet know that I've been, like, super impressed, but, like, the issue, like, with these cards is, like, you have to draw them, which, like, you don't have to do with, like, wish targets or stuff that can be Zenith for. I was running a Plague, but I cut that for Spore Frog. I was just missing the Frog, and, like, I was saying, like, you know, you have to draw Engineer Plague, and if you don't, it doesn't do anything, but that's not as true for Spore Frog. Um, so anyway, and then so like I'm running one Guile in this version, um, three Invocations, like the three Argothians, so that you can have one to wish for, one Eidolon, so that your Zeniths have a little bit of flexibility, and like um, uh, one Replenish, because uh, with Invocation, Replenish gets a lot better, because it's another enchantment that's like a real threat, that like if you get it back, versus a, like a permission-based deck or a Chalice deck, it's really good. Um, one confinement. I'm thinking about upping that to two, and I don't know where I would make room for it yet. Um, but like I think confinement is a little easier to achieve. It's easier to achieve an aggressive confinement with invocation, copying like ground seal or abundant growth early on. Anyway, so that's what I'm running. Let's see how I do. Um, so. The metagame's okay. Blue Red Wizards and Burn are on the rise. Not really sure why that is. Are they? A friend of mine was running. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Blue Red Delver at the Belgian Legacy Cup final, which I did not do so hot in. I lost uh, twice to Infect, and I lost uh, once to Burn. Um, he just drew like a bunch of Adol in game one and game two. Uh, it was pretty close, but um, he actually blew me away with a volcanic fallout of all things uh, that I did not see coming. So on the play, this might be keepable because like we've got grass to buy time if they're a Delver deck. Um, we've got multiple threats if they're a control deck. I probably would mulligan this on the draw, but like. I think it's probably keepable, but not great on the play. But we would obviously like to have some turn one acceleration is the problem here. I'm going to lead off with a Heath, um, just to like possibly create some ambiguity about what I'm playing, although that's less effective online when they can just Google your name. I guess I could Google them as well. But.
It's all modern stuff in here. A tomb deck. Let's try with that one. Well, let's see what they've got to follow it up. It'd be annoying if they had a, uh, like, Thought Knots here. They must have something. Um, so the thing is, they didn't do something turn one. They're probably gonna, like, play a, uh, fucking, um... You know, we can actually Confinement here. And Big Eldrazi would still have a way to win, but Eldrazi Stumpy wouldn't be able to do it. Let's see. We'd have five cards left in hand. Four for Confinement Upkeep. Play the Presence. Three. Two cards for Confinement Upkeep. Play the next Presence. We draw one. We're back to two. Discard. We're at one. We draw two cards. One of them has to be an Enchantress. Or Enchantment. But even if it's not, we'd have like a... Well, we wouldn't have a Grass can be countered, but we'd have... Um, presence. Hmm. The alternate, the alternate option is to go uh, Savannah now. Presence. Um, like they're probably holding a um, like the five mana one with haste, right? Because otherwise they would have done something. They're gonna want to like tap out, so they couldn't do anything this turn. So they're not gonna be able to like wasteland and do the thing that they couldn't do this turn. You see what I'm saying? So, I think we actually can just uh, get the Savannah and Presence, and that way we can safely support um, the casting the Confinement next turn. At that, if we can cast it next turn, we'll be very safe. Now, if they do Wasteland, um, Unless they like top deck something to cast, like I was saying, like you know they didn't do anything last turn, so Ugh. So Cavern, I think, tells us that they're on Stompy rather than Big Eldrazi. I like I think Big Eldrazi does sometimes. I think they do play Temple generally, but not Cavern Missiles. Let's look it up, guys. We don't have to rely on my guesswork here. How many of them are on Cavern Missiles? No, no, no. Yeah, so we're on this is Eldrazi Stompy. Yeah, Reality Smasher, that's the guy his name I could not think of. Um, alright, so they probably have just no way to main deck deal with confinement. I wouldn't be like too cocky about that, but like we can be fairly sure. Because we cast the Enchantress first, we're up several cards, so I don't mind like cycling that. What we're gonna do next turn is presence into another cycler. We can discard. I don't think we want to get rid of our other enchantments. I think maybe the Zenith. Like, main deck, it's really just another Enchantress, but we've already got this one. Having the main deck replenish against the deck, a Chalice deck, like, that doesn't have counters, means, like, um, where you're, like, able to like, basically just, like, cycle stuff and, like, anticipate that sooner or later we will draw the replenish. You know, honestly, even if we don't, we're pretty fine in this situation. Like, I think we actually have this one, unless they're main deck in all his dust, which would be very unusual. So, like, we've already pretty much ruled out Big Eldrazi. Um, how many of them? No, no, none of these. Oh, some did main deck Ratchet Bomb. Okay. The Ratchet Bomb would take a while to get up to the ability to kill a confinement, so you know, we'd have plenty of time. And they also can't thought not serious right now. They can however play an end brainer and start drawing cards that's the blue inside they can't target us. Okay. Mm. 
Is there any other way to say this? Like I said, at this point we're just cycling these, so that's fine. It's a net, net mana. Or net uh, cards, I mean. Just what I meant. So this should be over. Like, if they have Ratchet Bomb, it could be a problem. Endbringer is probably the best thing they can do at this point. Yeah, so they'll start drawing cards next turn. Uh, we already have. Let's ground seal here. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and get the traps so I can play this Estrids. Alright. Uh, well, I reckon it'll be a card either way because I'm gonna cast. Uh, I guess this gives me a card now. Um. I don't really need the extra lands. We're obviously going to want that Sanctum. We can actually just Oblivion Rain the Chalice and start sticking our one mana stuff. I guess we can discard the Zenith. I guess I could be a little bit concerned at this point about um, all this dust. But I don't want to get a Gaddock Teague main deck because they can, like, main deck, they'll probably have an answer for it. So maybe I should just focus on comboing off fast. What does that mean? That means. Um, Oblivion, I suppose. I did not know another. Um, yeah, we're going to need a Zenith. So really we're just like, if they have an all this dust, they could like actually get us. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that. Because we're definitely going to play more than one spell this turn. So like this is um, probably the matchup besides like maybe burn where confinement's really the best, um, especially game one. Like you know, I just have nothing for it. How is the game two? They generally bring in. Um, generally will bring in. Um, um, like, if I was going to focus on Invocation, like, if I didn't have as much on board, it would actually make more sense of Oblivion Rain, something like uh, Reality, maybe not even Reality, especially maybe like Oblivion Silver. Something that, like, if he does all his dust, wouldn't have haste. Um, and that way, with Invocation, it's better to hit uh, Chalice with Invocation, because that way you can give it back, and it's at zero, and then you can get something else. Um, but it doesn't, I think, matter in this case, because I'm going to focus on going off here. I guess maybe I should hit the end burner. Maybe I'll do that if I draw another um, invocation or uh, binding, even.
hasn't drawn a wasteland yet. And he would probably rather at the same time. I think I actually want it in blue because like I would like to draw an invocation here. We've got two left on the deck. There it is. So I mean I can like make it now so like I can um even if he does all his dust, I'll be able to like recover and hopefully by then I'll have drawn a replenish. And um There's the replenish, okay. Here, to make would be sweet, but in Strayad, I'll um, let's uh, let's hit the uh, Oblivion. So, our or maybe the I guess the mimic's gonna be like five power at best. Um, all right, so um, I guess we might as well live in with share. So all we really need to keep here is um, we don't need these enchantresses. I would avoid discarding an Eidolon if I had it, but I don't. Um, yeah, obviously don't need all these lands, much less fetch lands. I guess we, we definitely want to keep the Sanctum in case he has Wasteland, uh, in case they have Wasteland, the grass doesn't do anything. Um uh, makes better to replenish. Uh, I don't think I need two wishes. I don't need guile. I don't need abundant growth. The fuck is that? Oh my god, I maybe I should have thought of Vivian. Or not Vivian. Uh Kozilek? Ulamog. That's it. Man, I hope they don't have Ulamog. That would actually be GG, right? Yeah, shit, I can't do... If I played the grass? Mm, if I played the grass. I wasn't... I didn't think about Ulamog. So that was a misplay. If we played the grass, um, we'd have been fine. Uh, Still, I mean, it's rough luck. They, uh, they, yeah, it looks like they just play one and uh, they just got it. They didn't like search for this, did they? No, they don't have either. So they just have this. Um, I was thinking of all this dust and not like thinking about like what. The possibility of Ulamog would be, um, which was silly because it was right here. So yeah, I mean, if we put the grass up, mm, let's see. No, I mean they hit grass, and so the other possibility is we could have wished for an Aegis um, to like just be a chump blocker. Um, yeah, actually, you know, and if we'd hit the Mimic instead of uh, one of these, we'd still survive. So that's unfortunate, because we really had that one. Um, but yeah, through not thinking about uh, fully what their outs are and them getting rather lucky, we uh, kind of lost it. So what we're worried about here 
is sideboard tends to be like a lot of thorns and ratchet bombs and usually all this dust. Oh no, not it's gone away from that. Ashen Rider, how the fuck? Is that just for sneak and show? Alright. So what we want to bring in is well no, that doesn't really do anything. Um back to basics. Mm -mm 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 -mm. On the play, I'm going to take out a grass. On the draw, I might keep it. Like, obviously, it's bad against Chalice, but it's good against the, their aggressive starts. The curve's a little high, obviously. It's not necessarily the worst thing, given, like, Chalice. Um, the thing is, you really want business spells. I might even take out. I might take out Adolon. Like, she's expensive, and we've already got plenty of Zenith targets. Uh, what am I doing? I don't need to bring up both of those. I was thinking, like, the wish was... Mm, I think I might actually... Do it like that. Uh, so I just need to cut... I guess I can get one ground seal. Alright. I don't really want to cut ground seal that much, because, like... Um, so, like, obviously I just draw the card. But, like, that can be important, especially with Invocation, and also versus um, Trellis. Really annoyed that they had their out. Hmm. So we got to turn one and turn a uh, sprawl into like what would be really good if they don't have a turn one chalice. If they do, we are kind of just stuck with like wish for our Gothian. Unless we draw land. If they don't have a turn one chalice. That's pretty good. Um, I think I'll keep it. It's risky. Uh, I did not think about that. How much time is on our clock? We had enough time that I could have like really stopped and thought about like what their likely outs are and like realized that. A lot of them are running dual mock, so it's like I guess a little confusing because like the you know the line between like big Eldrazi and Eldrazi Stompy is really blurred. Um, hmm. There'd be an argument for Sprawl, but like I'm already kind of pot committed to them. Like, um, okay, I'm not having turn one trail, so I was gonna say. So it's mimic. Okay, well that's screwed. Doing this first in case we draw an Argothian. Uh, I think we've got our land drops and we've got um, any color with abundant growth, so we don't really need to um, uh, use Stopia Sprawl. And um, that'll be an extra card next turn unless they have a Thought Not Seer here. That was a rough one, guys. Sure.
Alright, well, I'll do it. The other argument would be obviously to name green, play the abundant growth, and then like maybe draw an elephant grass. But if you don't, then like it's probably just better to get the enchanters out now, because next turn we're going to confinement. And if they do do anything like really scary, I was going to say we can chump block. Losing our confinement sucks, but um, they don't have a chalice, so like grass is still alive. As actually is like wish for spore frog. Oh, we should have. Should we draw this spore frog? There'd be an argument for it in the sense that, like, uh, if using it for one, it's not counted by Chalice for one, unlike Wishing for uh, the Frog. But, uh, this it's fine. I didn't need to blow that up. Figure out another board. I didn't even actually need to play my land yet. Oh, just terrible all the way around. I'm going to cut in grass. Make it very difficult for them to attack unless they have all this dust. Which was, uh. I think they're always from casting it anyway. Didn't read the cards. A lot of people don't read Elephant Grass. I don't know why that is. It's just a thing that happens a lot. So I need to make sure that I put the flicker on the top of the stack so that I'm not paying up key if it is indeed what I want to copy, which it probably is. Hmm. You're losing a mana by paying for it. So maybe I don't want to. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because otherwise, I think I can just like kill like his entire board pretty much, which is better. Because it can't be all dusted. But, hmm. So for that reason, could I wild growth? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten at least. Yeah, so maybe I just want to do that because that increases my chances of um, being able to successfully murder his whole team. Which is the real goal here. Um, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Man, that's not enough. Okay. All right. Um, so if we are on the draw, our one mana stuff gets even worse. So I might take out a wild growth for a Caracas, just to like make sure that I have um, more land drops. Um. Is Wish just something I should take out if they're on the play? I've been debating this a lot recently. 
I think maybe it is. We'll try it. It could be wrong. Obviously, Dingwick would come in and argue with him without the ability. <sighs> See, but I don't know if they're actually on uh, the whole, like, all this dust thing. I think maybe we want to be able, like, I think Spore Frog would be better than a grass here, even though it lowers our enchantment count. Um, Aegis, maybe? Because it stops um, Oblivion Sower and Thought Knot Sphere. That's another two minute enchantment. You can also chop block, which, like, I know isn't that impressive, but. So maybe, like, that Wicker Bow, like. Some more, like, stuff you can do that affects the board is more valuable in this matchup. Um, what's our enchantment count at? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, that's okay. It's playable at 29. So do we want to get rid of something like maybe a presence for um Gaddick? I don't think so. I think if they're like on this like hybrid of big Eldrazi and Eldrazi Stompy, like they've already got like stuff like Little Mog or whatever the fuck, whichever the fuck one he is. Little Mog that um doesn't care about Teague and is still like really brutal. So we're still kind of just like hoping to drop back to basics for the late game. Or like doing like to clear his board first so he can't just. Yeah, like even if I'd hit the mimic with the binding and then play to grass. So man, this hand is pretty bad. Like it's really dead to chalice for one, and the um the scry is more valuable if you're on the draw. So it's a little bit better to mulligan. I think we keep this. Obviously we're still pretty vulnerable to chalice for one. But we do have that, so Mirrorless. Yeah, okay, I don't have that. I was gonna say I kind of want them to do that because now I'm just gonna like knight and blow it up, get this party started. Uh, I don't. I was gonna say I was gonna get a buy, but I don't need to do it. In fact, I don't even need to uh, crack. Although doing so means that uh, well, if they've got a wasteland, I don't need the blue yet. And if they've got a wasteland, the trap is also gonna die. But like future fetch lands won't be able to get it. So I might as well just tap this for the black now. Play a presence. Next turn I'll be able to play Dimwake. I'm uh, obviously not really keen on giving him the extra card with Reshaper. I'm fine with taking three damage and hitting back for two. Or even just keeping it as a chump blocker for something else. It only prevents one damage. See now the three damage matters more, but Well, the Doomwake would probably be in the process of killing this guy anyway, but do I want to give them the extra card now? No, especially. But I also don't want to take the extra three damage. One, two, three, four, five. So just Doomwake. We can't play the grass unless we draw land. Then we can play the grass first, and it effectively just costs. 
one mana. Hmm. I think we do make this trade. Although I don't like the idea of accelerating him that mandibular mog or whatever. It's so whenever you play another land. Yeah, well, hold on. No, I'm not going to. Because I can get the land off of this. Yeah, it's not playing it, it's putting it on the battlefield. Sorry that took a minute, guys, but it was a hard decision. Okay. So that's a pretty good draw if we get another turn with this fetch and with. Uh, So this guy can block Reality Smasher. Um, that said, I don't see much point in attacking right now. I think I'm still on the defense here. Um, And it's not like they have an ancient tomb that's like eating them away. So I don't know, maybe it's a mistake, but like. Yeah, I don't know. I think now I'm glad though. Oh no, I kind of wish I blocked last turn. So, so. Well. An extra turn without them. Uh, so, yeah. So it doesn't matter because it's going to die in a second anyway. But, uh,. Got three minutes here. Okay, well, I definitely want to start with the invocation, and I don't want to use all my green, which I, I would have to yeah, just be down to white mana, which is bad because I do want to play the grass. So we gotta tap the sanctum a little bit early, which means uh, our return isn't as good. But um, on the plus side, we're doing this, which is pretty good. I don't like that, obviously. Unfortunately, we're one man away from killing those fuckers. Okay, we need them to not, like, have an all is dust right now. Or an Ulamog, I guess. Would they be able to cast it? Six. No. Seven, eight. With seven, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they still can't all this dust because of Thorn. I actually want to keep Thorn around. Okay. That's fine. Gonna be, we're going to get the free triggers here. We're just going to um, get a free minus two, minus two. And it'll make it pretty easy to uh, achieve. I guess that's mana neutral. And it is it is pretty useful, actually. We might actually want to keep the thorn around and deal with the chalice. Oh shit, right. Forgot about that. Alright, so we need something that'll actually come into play, and that's this guy. 
Ah, uh, fucking uh, forgot to destroy the chalice. I'm an idiot. Um, okay, well, here we should definitely start attacking. We can't cast anything. So I think we got this one despite our misplay in game one. But, you know, I said that in game one, so let's stop saying stuff like that. Alright, well, I guess we're glad we got this. Okay. Alright, we got it. Um, and we even got to learn a free lesson by losing game one that Ulamog is being pretty widely played in what looks like Eldrazi Stompy, but it's like sort of a hybrid between Big and uh, Stompy. Because that guy really blew us out game one. The ceaseless hunger. Alright. Yeah, so had we um, been conscious of that, we would have been like, okay, they can't, all this doesn't matter because we have replenish. But you do feel better overall, like with a Doomwake, because that way, like, you, you know, it's not like they have a way to get their stuff back from the graveyard, you know, so like that's why Doomwake's really nice in this matchup. Because, like, if you're hiding behind a confinement, like, confinement's really good, especially game one, but, like, um, if you're hiding behind it, like, they can blow you out like they did. Whereas, like, Doom Lake permanently affects the board. Um, Alright, I won the die roll again. Good for us. This is a very good hand. Um, yeah, I don't know what else. You know, you've got your Sprawl. We're gonna name Blue. Um, We've got that for Savannah if we need it. If they go like turn one chalice, uh, I'd like to have the blue active because that way invocations. Okay, big Eldrazi. Well, it's a good thing we've got a fast start then because we're going to need it, generally speaking. They could be on a uh, like 12 post landing or whatever the fuck it's called, the blue green one with like Primeval Titan. But obviously, either that or just like. Regular, like big Eldrazi cloud ram. So, our goal is really just to go off as fast as possible. We're sort of like goldfishing each other, like racing them, our Emrakul versus their like ability to whatever. If we can attack that monolith, that'd be nice. Um, I'm generally going to get the free cards when I can in this matchup. Like I said, it's like a matter of ramping and uh, just going off faster than them. Which this has like a pretty good start. We would really like to take out that monolith. If we can take that out, we basically we can probably slow them down a turn. Okay, I've got a double clap post, that's not good. Oh shit. Not all is dust. Shit. Alright, hopefully, okay, so that's really bad for us. Hopefully, um, that's like, um, the other place they can stumble is, like, they run a lot of mana, so, like, they could just not have much else in the board, or much else, I'm um, sorry, in uh, their hand. Besides mana, that would be a help. That's pretty, that's eight mana. All right. Oh, that's a shame. Those were good cards. I wanted to draw those. All right. I think we want to. Um, the sower's kind of already done its damage. I think I want to hit the uh, chalice. Yeah. Ah, 
okay, so see, that's a problem because even if they don't have anything in hand right now, they have the ability to go get uh, Ulamog with Ayavugan. Which, like, frankly, makes no thematic sense, right? It was an Ugin, like, specifically, like, the enemy of the Ultra Z, so what is. Okay, whatever. I mean, I guess I don't read the fucking books. I don't give a shit about the story, but, uh, just seems internally inconsistent. Alright, so let's see what we can't do to... wait, that's not an Eldrazi ability, so they've got four, five, six, seven, they do have the ability to do it, yeah. We're not going to be able to stop them, I think, from casting that Ulamog, but what we can try to do is spread out, draw some cards, and be able to recover as best we can. Two, three, four, five. I'd still like to draw a replenish. You know, like obviously Ilmok exiles things, but it's probably gonna exile some stuff that um uh like land at least one land I would imagine, and we've already got a lot of enchantments, so like replenish would still be really good here. Um what have we got? It could be a mistake to run that out. But this way I can Zenith. He can't get rid of the Argothian. He can't target it with Illumog. Maybe he'll be tempted to get rid of the Confinement. He can't really like profitably get rid of the Binding because it's um it's uh, gonna just return the chalice with um, maybe it's right then to get um, the other get another Argothian and the next turn we have the ability to uh, draw off of them even if they exile our presence like Ulamog's obviously bad um, but two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They can cast Emrakul, I think, if they're running it, running that. Let's, I guess, let's do what we didn't do last time and just like double check what their options are. Yeah, I mean, it's generally going to be Ulamog, right? I don't. I think Emrakul is a sideboard card. Um, for whatever reason. Honestly, if they top deck and again we're just like totally screwed. All this dust, if they get the next one, that's also bad. Maybe for that reason we would want to hold back the Zenith and just draw while we can, because then we'd be left without an Enchantress. Okay, there's the Replenish, nice. So, so we don't need all these land drops. How are they tapping the Oblivion Sword? I'm looking confused what just happened. How? What the fuck? Just happened. Um, I might need to go get Blue Mana or even Black Eye Stars. I simply got oh my god. Okay. Oof. Rough. Okay, now we're rolling trying. Okay, the good news is we can like just replenish, I think, for a very profitable amount of mana. I imagine they kinda have to hit the sanctum, right? Sanctum. If they don't hit the confinement. Or actually, um, what do they hit? I don't know. We can actually like discard Dimwig to confine it if they don't hit it, and then replenish. And actually, is that enough to kill? Uh, oh, Uli. One, two. All right. What do they 
hit here. I would imagine like maybe the presence in Sanctum? No. Andreas and a confine. Okay. Interesting. I mean, like the confinement, I understand. The grass I think just is wrong. I mean they get an extra five damage through, but it hardly matters, does it? The thing is, now they're down to top deck mode again, because they can't eye of it again, and... wait, can they? Is there 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... Mana, maybe if... If they drew another clap post, maybe they'd actually be able to do again, and cast the other Lamog. Uh, let's see. I think we can actually just go off here, though, right? Do we want to, um, maybe we want to get the Enchantress first. How many wild growths are left? One, two, three, four. We really just need to find a living witch because we can double sanctum. Should have checked that I had an Argothian left because that could have not been true. We're running a little low on green, and this is going to draw us cards and make mana for the other one. So I'm just going to do this now. This is again under the assumption that I'll just be able to win this turn, which I think is right. Fucking thing. Alright, and the other one to get the Caracas. Zenith for zero, just to reduce my chances of decking. Uh, I am going to want to go ahead and get rid of the Lamaga guys. Why not? Oof. It's actually not a cut. I guess I can't cast anything else now. <laughs> Except for the other uh, Living Wish. I guess there's no reason to give away invocation. 
Okay. He isn't going to draw it out. Alright, so obviously Back to Basics comes in here. That's an obvious one. Gaddick does come in, unlike Eldrazi Stompy. Um, Amiri's Guile, again, you're trying to reduce your um, vulnerability to Chalice at 1. Guile is a relatively easy cut because, like, uh, you're usually not going to try to cast it turn 1, especially if you're on the draw. It's too slow. Um, Seal Primordium. And we're going to want Knight of... No, we're going to want Wicker Bow. Because on the draw, if he goes turn 1 Chalice, uh, we can go turn two, wish into turn three, Knight of Autumn, and that's a little slow, but at least it curves better than like Wicker Bow does. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so, grass is really bad here. Especially, uh, I mean, they probably like run like, they could run some number of reality smashers. And they definitely have like Thought Knots here, but like, so maybe I don't want to take them all out, but like two is probably sufficient. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking, Ground Seal doesn't do anything, which is true, but what does Doomic do anything? Can apply pressure, which uh, mm, matters so rarely. We do have Wish. Okay, we'll take out the Doomwake, though. We will lower our curve a little bit and make ourselves a little faster. What's our enchantment count? 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, 27, 28, 29. That's okay. Again, that's acceptable. I wouldn't generally want to go below 28 unless, like, how far you're willing to go kind of effect, is affected also by, like, how much you play the control in the matchup. This one, it's a little bit, especially if we're on the draw, but not, like, excessively so. So, I mean, we do have a turn two or Gothian. We could even go turn two <coughs> Gaddick if he doesn't go turn one Chalice and stop. Um, they don't go. Uh, so, I mean, this is pretty good. You could draw badly and not be able to do anything with it. We're definitely going to abundant growth here. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. We are still, of course, running five fetches at replenish. <sighs> it's probably worth it to go wild growth, because that way we can start drawing cards on turn. No, I want to be able to get any color. I think that's more important. It's a, it's a hard color. It's a tough call. I could definitely see it being right to like wild growth. What I shouldn't do is what I did in one game that unfortunately got streamed where I forgot about Chalice and tried to wild growth. Because like without that Chalice, I definitely would have played wild growth into our growth team. That was embarrassing. That rules out Gaddick. Um, I think maybe what I want to do is just play the invocation. It'll draw two cards now, and then a card next upkeep if it survives. Which it should. I don't see him being able to hollow dust. Them being able to all this dust quite yet. So, um. The next turn we can just play Wicker Bow.
So obviously there's no reason not to flicker this, right? We get the free card. And uh, that's what it's there for, really. Hmm. Confinement. I do think you keep it in, but we don't need to play it just yet, obviously. I think it's right to uh, just go ahead and drop the wicker bow. If their hand is not very gassy, we can start applying pressure. Uh, even if it is, we can destroy a chalice. Probably the one for two, and then next turn we can get it. They don't have too much mana here, actually. They've only got three mana. That's four mana, really. It's pretty good for us. Maybe I should do it for one, actually. I can start going off here. Or destroy the one I mean for one, obviously. Man, I think they're quite a ways from being able to sweep. Sweep the leg. So, we want to start drawing cards. Nice. Um, but I think we'll wait and let them tap out some with something first. Because there's no point in doing it just yet. Um, I get, well, I mean, I guess the point would be if they've got a thought knots here. We can actually, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do confinement. And because we know we're going to uh, be um, dropping back to basics, we'll just drop, get a forest rather than play a savannah. And there's no reason not to. Uh, but it's discard ground seals, I suppose. My friend, um, who was playing Grixis Delver like forever, um, switched to Reanimator, uh, but he did really poorly in the um, lulls. That's hilarious. Um, see, now would be a great time for Back to Basics, right? Missed a bunch of land drops. Um, we don't need. Uh, all right, yeah, upkeeps. That, uh, I'm gonna go first. Right, 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 right. We're going to spread it out, obviously. There's no reason not to put it on a different land. Uh, we don't need that. I think we do want to keep the uh, fucking uh, confinement around. We've got, obviously, plenty of mana. Well, that should be game. Ah, uh, that's gonna be counted. There's no reason to play it. All right, all right, we got it. Um, I mean, it was back to basics overkill there. It's hard to say. They can like kind of pull out of nowhere, I suppose. Not really, actually. I'd have to like draw like multiple cloud posts in a row. But I do think it was correct to chalice uh, to abundant growth rather to prioritize abundant growth over wild growth because like we had our land drops. Uh, obviously, we're not playing around days, um, so like. And their start was not very fast. If they don't go like turn one cloud post, they kind of have to go turn two cloud post, or else they're like, got they've got a pretty slow start anyway. So it's not as important to race them. 
it's more important to make sure we get our uh, access to any color because, like, you know, um, we're in a four-color deck, and we've got, uh, what, um, I guess 14 uh, mana fixers for, like, um, most colors, but eight of those are countered by Chalice at one, you know, so um, uh, it is important. Uh, uh, one of the guys in the Discord uh, lost a game because uh, against Death in Texas, where like they totally had it, but um, because they didn't go turn one abundant growth, which I think was understandable because their hand was pretty enchantment like. But like the Death in Texas player, like went turn two chalice for one, which like apparently like 40% of them run now, which I didn't even realize. Um, and like so they died to like some flicker wisps and like dahlias and shit with like a doomwake and an engineered plague in hand because like their lone bayou got wastelanded. Um, so, like, uh, what I'm talking about is how important, uh, abundant growth can be for the deck. Yeah, we keep this, like, if we're against yet another Chalice deck, we could be in trouble, but I don't, I guess we don't have too many threats like we do have Invocation. Um, so this doesn't tell us much, you know, we could be against, like, uh, so if I mid range, or we could be against um, uh, Canadian. Actually, maybe we should have dropped the fetch under the assumption that we could be against Canadian. But mm. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a mistake, actually. I have it on a start for, But I, I, mean, no, I don't have any other lands. So. Hmm. I think uh, I've got a lot of cards here, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, actually, I'm going to sprawl. I'm going to name blue, so that way I can cast the invocation, and that can help fix if I do need anything else. But obviously, I'm going to uh, lead off with the Argothian. Maybe it's not obvious, but that's what I'm going to do. Now, they could have, um, if they're on, like, Salte, they could have Trophy. So, like, Wild Growth, like, I'd still cycle it, but um, I think I'd like to draw. I'm also, like, a little bit worried about a turn um, three uh, Leovold. So I'll draw the extra card now while I can hope to find a Living Wish or Blue Rain. They, there's no way they're going to stifle this, right? That would be so silly. Okay. So we hope they don't have Leo Hold. Or that if they do, we get. Okay, phew. So we dodge Leo Hold. So they are on Celtic Colors, which it's not Canadian. Uh, they could be on Team America, which is the Celtic Delver deck, although it doesn't see too much play. Most people on Celtic now are on this kind of like mid range thing, which I guess Team America was relatively mid range. Now it's some kind of fucking combo. Oh, it's okay. It's just like the traps probably just for sideboard of rope decays and shit. All right. Well, that was not what we expected. Hmm. Well, I doubt. There's no reason to reveal our hand. They could like wait. Did they already thought seize us? No, they discarded their thought seize. Uh, wait. Okay. Hold on. What do we got here? We got. Wait, what the fuck is going on? They have no fucking. Oh, they did cast past. They cast past their flames. They've got seven mana left. Nine, so they go to their. So let's just not give away information. Um. So and these days, I don't think they even play empty the warrens. Like, except as a sideboard card. Yeah, which I obviously wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, it's just Pastel Flames, yeah. So, uh, what we. This is. Um, sorry, I didn't. What the fudge? Okay. Stuff. I'm bringing in. I, sorry, I didn't do this uh, earlier. I didn't realize like um, how hard it is to follow if you're watching this. Sometimes, 
So the, the O-Rings are obviously useless, right? Um, my main wish target is actually going to be Fairy Macab. So for that reason, I'm going to take out Ground Seals. Since it's a non-bow, as the kids say. Ganics like our number one plan. Choke and back to basics are also really good, potentially. And the AF Chaos is really good. If, you know, we get it, obviously. Seal Primordium <coughs> isn't great. What it can do is uh, hurt hands where they've got multiple lines eye diamonds. So you can destroy the first one in response to the second. Which is very marginal, but like you need to make marginal plays a lot of the time in this matchup unless you just get really lucky with like a Gaddick and they don't find the answer or you, you get a really lucky choke. Uh, Aegis is our secondary wish target. Knight of Autumn is probably better than a lot of things. I'm going to take out one grass. I think I'm going to take out Dimwick as well. It's rather, it's really slow. He does apply pressure, is like the only thing really going for him. Um, <sighs> I think I probably want to side off or play it. I guess that's like a top deck if they like thought sees my choke. It's really marginal. Um, the reason I don't necessarily want to take out more grass is, well, fine. Is like our curve, but like you know, even though it's just uh, with an enchanter sound, it's just a, a one green mana draw card. But like sometimes that'll draw you into something versus like a three mana draw card. Obviously, it doesn't give you much chance to play whatever you draw into. All right. Well, at least we have the advantage of knowing what they're on. So we've got mm, this is tough. We've got the turn two zenith if we draw a land, which is what we want. We've only got about a 35% chance of drawing a land. We do have a Gothian, and then like the following turn, we get Abundant Growth. That's a tough one. Um, I think I'm going to keep it. Go away. Alright. Obviously, we're not really worried about Wasteland. So, like, you don't give a shit about that. Putting a wild growth on a bite. This is a very hard matchup, though. This is our second hardest, I'd say. Mm, yeah, I would say so. After, um... Reanimator. Nice. We are lucky. We are lucky boys. And gals. Some lucky enchantressy gals. So they need to find an answer. Hopefully they that takes them some time. And they have to like tap out and we get a chance to like draw like a choke or back to basics. Even though back to basics would hurt us, but like again, we are the control deck. Being able to apply pressure helps like to attack for two helps a tiny bit in the sense that like you make ad nauseums worse. And Ant is not as reliant on ad nauseum, like it's very unusual for them to need that. Usually they're a Past and Flames deck, which is why Fearing the Cub is um, our main uh, wish target. Their main plan is just to cast Past and Flames. Man, I hope they don't name our ghost soon. It'd be super awkward, to be honest. Hopefully they name Presence. Ah, oh, fuck me. Alright. Well, I still have my Gaddick. The two cards that Gaddick stops me from casting. Moles. It's really unfortunate. I feel like it was, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I would probably have been right to name Presence because, like, I, the deck runs more Presences than our good things. So I got a little lucky. Hopefully they don't bounce here. They're just going for it. I guess they just have the chain of vapor in hand, huh? But then how are they casting it? Wait. 
What are they doing? They can't pass through flames. Do they know that? Do they know they can't pass through flames? Oh wait, they can get chain of vapor, bounce it. Yeah, they can actually, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, they got okay. Caracas. The fuck? Do they still have enough? They only have one dark ritual. Oh, they need to ponder into it? But they don't have double black left. Empty the ones? That would be really funny considering like I sided out the grasses. Well, uh, why on earth would they bring in empty the ones? That's really odd. Maybe they thought I'd have ley line or something? That seems really bad. Okay. Well, this shouldn't have worked. Um, is that going to do anything for me? No. Uh, I feel like it's a really bad plan for them to bring in uh, Empty the Warrants, but, you know, I guess, you know, if you're very favored, you can make mistakes and still win. So that's just how that goes in magic. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess there was an argument against leaving or punishing. Like, also, like, well, there's Gaddick. And then also, like, that. Mm, but I mean, like, most of the cards that he'd have wanted to hit with therapy and discard and stuff would have been enchantments like Chakra Back to Basics. So, I still think, you know, had we not just been blown away by therapy and, uh, they had the, uh, what they needed to, uh, win around, uh, Gaddick. Oh well. Oh man. That's a tough one. So you got a lot of card draw. You got a turn to Enchantress. And you got about a 45% chance that the opponent plays Wasteland. And about a 40-ish chance that they draw if they do. Yeah, that's that's right. So that's about, and if they don't though, this is a really good hand. If they do, we're in a lot of trouble. All right. If they do, I guess I'd rather have, what should I rather have? Maybe it's wrong. If they have a wasteland, I'm gonna be a ways from casting Doomwake is my reasoning here. going to... they could be on Storm, in which case I want to just... Uh, Underground Sea doesn't tell us fuck all. They could still be on Wasteland and just like draw with a Brainstorm. So maybe I just want to draw cards while I can and make sure I get my land drop next turn. I'm going to do that.
That suggests they're looking for a brainstorm though, which means not storm. So probably either Grixis Control or Grixis Delver, possibly Death Shadow. But it could be a lot of things. Plus, they play Underground Sea, and okay, well, Delver. So they play Wasteland. So we are going to go ahead and draw a card here to try and hit our land drop and reduce potential damage if that Brainstorm found a Wasteland. It didn't. All right, so Grixis Delver. Now, let us hope they don't find that wasteland. Shuffle. We know they don't have days now. We've got four cards in hand. It's probably like at least one bolt or creature removal spell. What is Grixis Delver playing these days? Braid. Usually fork bolt though, right? Braids like a minority of Alright. No wasteland. Maybe it's like a wasteland and two other non fetch lands and they're like, is it worth it? So Elephant Grass is really good against this deck. That's true of most Elder decks, but especially um, this one. It's not quite as strong. Actually, probably. Okay, it's strongest against Death Shadow. Second strongest, Grixis Delver. Uh, probably the least is uh, Canadian, because like Tarmogoy's quite good at getting through grass at a reasonable price. At a reasonable price. So obviously they're gonna to want to make as many tokens as they can. Oh, okay, that's what it's about, huh? So I mean, we're already like in the like fuck by wasteland boat. Wait, did they shuffle? Cast ponder. Jesus, to shuffle his or her. Yes. Okay. So there we go. I'm a bit late, but uh, we'll take it, I suppose. Uh, so what we're gonna do here? Play an old basic forest. We're gonna play Invocation, and it's gonna copy Wild Growth, targeting uh, this here forest. So this way, basically, gonna cost two mana, and then next turn we can use it as mana or card draw, as we so desire. Um, so we can just take the hit. It's seven, eight. It's not not pretty, but like they've only got one thing, one uh, red source, so they can't like triple bolt us out of the game. Um, So I think next turn, uh, this bad boy is going to become a presence. Um, because we've got a lot of cards in hand, we want to, um, we're obviously going to cast the confinement, but if they do have a counter for it, we want to be able to draw into an elephant grouse. Drawing two cards per enchantment is going to help us do that. We're going to start reducing our vulnerability to wasteland a little bit. That's a good job. Uh, I think it's right to get this out first. Obviously we got rather lucky that the Delver player did not have their Wasteland, which there was a 45% chance of them having, more or less. <coughs> Maybe it's slightly less because like a fair number of the hands that would, well not a fair number, but some portion of the hands that would have Wasteland would be hands that would be um, Unkeepable because it is a colorless source. 
and they are rather landline. So this is going to resolve. All right. I'm okay with that. Uh, nice. So I think again, we're just going to use this for the mana. We can just push So, uh, you know, you get a bit lucky there, because Wasteland definitely would have blown us out. Well, we did find another land. Mm, no, it wasn't that fast. So yeah, Wasteland would have gotten us. Uh, all right, Chokes, come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chaos is debatable. Let's come back to that. Let's put a pin in that. So, Choke we want, for sure. Um, what's not? Great. Against this version, like a rain effect. <sighs> aren't that strong. I say binding especially because like if they're on the draw four mana is a lot to ask. Or if we're on the draw four mana is a lot to ask. Maybe Aeon just dies to bolt. But it is another enchantress effect, and it's good with your punish. Guile's probably just really slow against them. Frog situation also, I think it's in this matchup, it's okay as a wish target rather than something to bring in for Zenith. Because I'm not sure I would want to draw it. Um, they probably bring in Surgical, and like Ground Seal is just useful generally as a way to. Uh, work with invocation and also to like um, mm. if you get a single enchantress out you want to draw the cantrip enchantments because they do have like hand disruption as well so like if you're in top deck mode with a single enchantress that's resolved which happens a lot you want to draw the cantrip ones to start getting ahead in cards um, I think we just run it like that we just yeah so we're taking out uh, guile and binding um, and bring it in the chokes, and that should be sufficient. Like, there's an argument for in the Eye of Chaos. Mm. Obviously, it's really good against Days, Force of Will. It's like not, mm. I guess it's okay against Ball and Brainstorm, but, mm. and it's good with Choke. Hmm. Maybe it's better than Replenish. Replenish is obviously a much better top deck, but in the Eye of Chaos, it's probably better to have in the beginning. Nah. Can't say. Oh, no lance. Well, that's an easy choice. Mm. Not amazing. Um, they did mulligan as well. So if they don't have too fast to start, this might be alright. We've got abundant growth. We're going to scry another card. The scry is more valuable on the draw because you're going to. Um, draw it regardless. Do we need another land? We might actually. So, alright, fine. They could be on Stifle, some minority of them appear to be. About a quarter of them. 
Well, I don't know what that's going to hit. Probably the worst shot. Maybe the other. Whatever. Okay, well, that's rest of my space. So, there's no reason. Uh, I hope I played the right fetch when they already saw it. I guess, like, I could play around Stifle, but I've got mana requirements. I think I'm gonna sprawl first. Run in blue, obviously. I wish they can daze, that's okay. At least I only spent two mana on it, versus like if I get an Argothian and they, uh, like if I hold it next turn, I'm still gonna be dazeable if I don't wanna actually play the Argothian. And I do have hand disruption, and tempo does like matter against them. And I do have other threats, even if they do, um, like. Uh, days it. Like, I still got the Orion and the Invocation. So it's like, oh, okay. I was gonna say, if I don't draw something I can play with the Argothian, it'd be debatable, but since I can play, I'm gonna do that. I could have Force of Will. Well, I haven't done any sculpting. Yeah, okay. Well, the good news is hmm, they probably don't have a days for this grand sale, which means next turn we can play the invocation and it will actually start drawing cards. Which we might actually do over the present since it doesn't take cards to draw. Uh, it doesn't take mana to draw cards that way. Unlike, um, they do have this something of a clock here. Uh, hmm. Maybe it's actually right to go ahead and uh, Oblivion Ring away their Pyromancer. They've only got one fucking card in hand. And then next turn, I can actually, like, Invocation copy it, like, hit the token if I so chose. Hmm. Yeah, and if the last card is a spell pierce, I'm not as worried about this being countered. And now they just have this for pressure. This funny little guy. Looks like he's dancing. He's having a good time. Good for him. Hardly even bothered that he's clawing at my face. Alright, that's fine. I'm okay with either of these. I think I'm not too concerned about, uh... I think I'll start drawing cards. I'm not too concerned about the, uh... Ah, oh, shit. No, wait. I want to be spell pierce proof. A close one. Oh, let's start copying. Let's start drawing cards. I've already gone through two wastelands, so I could just not crack this. I think I might do that and just play the amount of growth on it.
They could have Winter Orb, I suppose, so maybe I want to start uh, piling it on. Sense for him to drop these lands here. Oh, so I can also play the Pyromancer. Here. Oh my god, he actually paid two mana to attack for one. Wow. Alright. Uh, let's try the extra card. We could wave. It's just the number we have now. Alright, well, that's all she wrote. And they have one card in hand. Oh shit, I don't have black mana. Mm. Silly me. Well, maybe I'll draw a sprawl or an abundant growth. What do you think? I guess not. Okay. Alright. Uh, well, in fairness, it's a quite favorable match, so we got that going for us. Alright, well, we got our money back. Now to game five. This one actually went pretty quick. The last two matches, I guess, were fast, so that helps. We gotta get this in. We could even get this in under two hours. That'd be the first. Hopefully, it's a good matchup. I feel like I haven't been paired against like a grindy deck in forever, like Miracles or Grixis Control. So I went to the Belgian Legacy Cup um, and did not do so great. I started, I had two buys, but then, and I won game one against uh, Blue Black Delver. Then I got paired against Infect and got like uh, turn three with counter backup both games. Uh, then Burn and like game one, he just had like double eight on. Um, and then game two, yeah, Volcanic, I was a little tight on mana, and um, so I had to like play out some Argothians that otherwise maybe I wouldn't have, and like Volcanic, because um, that was the only thing I could do, uh, and Volcanic Blowout just blew me out as uh, Fallout, whatever it is. Alright, um, so that's pretty good. Got our turn one Wild Growth and like a lot of threats that we can cast on turn two. And they can't like turn one chalice, so hoping they're a grinded deck. And uh, <sighs> oh, you'll see, I suppose. Depths, perhaps? Could be elves. Hopefully, it's not elves. Depths, maybe? Hopefully not storm come by again. Now they're probably gonna hit Xena three yard list because they don't know what the hell I'm playing. Uh, so I'm like mm, Zenith. I don't know, if they had presence that kind of tells us maybe they're on some sort of like grindy deck, like maybe check pile or like uh, some kind of assault deck control. Hmm. Yeah, I think that still tells us the same thing, because like a combo deck would be worried about what Zenith might possibly be able to get, even though like it really can't get much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the trot. Like, they could have Wasteland, but uh. Also gonna do the Zenith instead of presence. For someone? Now what are they on? Is the question. Don't like that. 
don't like that one. The shit. Duress. That tells us combo, I think. Pretty much every deck running Duress is a combo deck. But they didn't get the Zenith. No, it just tells who plays Duress. And <clears throat> don't want an invocation here. Because that'll give me four mana next turn if I miss this land drop. Which I think would actually let me draw more cards than just playing the presence. Okay, well I guess I got the land drop, so... Oh. Oh, well, there's no reason not to put it on the basic. Well, I guess Assassin's Trophy is actually a reason. So there is that. I'm starting to suspect they're on combo, which ain't good. Hopefully they don't have it this turn. We have a bit of bad luck getting two ant players in uh, one tournament. Yeah, there it is. This isn't the same guy, is it? And I'm just like really bad with names. Well, maybe it's a bad match. Mm -hmm. I guess there's no information to hide here. Unfortunate that we're running into this twice. All right. Well, I think our sideboard plan was right before, although it was kind of random that this, that guy decided to bring in empty the Warrens. But what are you going to do? Not sure it made much difference. So all these cards come in. This is a wish target. This is a wish target. I guess that can be a wish target if. Uh, So, and what we're taking out is Doomwake, Binding, Oblivion Rain, Ground Seals. Again, because Macabre is going to be like our main go to wish target. Two Grasses. And uh, yeah, we're going to bring in all these other cards. Um, I guess there's an argument for Elder, like if it does get to the mid. Uh, is it better than like Adalon, perhaps? Maybe. This would only matter, obviously, if they like fumble. But that's probably true of Adalon. I don't know. For the same reason, like I was saying, for like Seal of Primordium last time, is like for the multiple LED hands. Is why you do that. Oh man. So it's got a turn to wish for uh, Macabre, and if the next two cards include a land or a wild growth, we've got either choke or back to basics. So I think you have to keep it, although I sure would like. Um, I don't even know what I would like. Yeah, I mean, I would like a wild growth. I mean, in terms of like tap taking, I don't know what I would like. I suppose. I don't know. Should 
just to not shuffle. That ain't good. Alright. Let's uh, go ahead and get our... I mean, the irony is we'd want to drop so we can cast back to basics, but that's going to be lost to either land. But I don't think there's too much we can do about that. Obviously, I can't six through their turn with a uh, macabre in hand. Now, if they go for a discard spell, you know, they should be bringing in bounce in place of discard. It would be kind of bad for them to side out some of their own game for dis uh, for bounce. Because, like, I'm a lot more likely to win from them just, like, fumbling than anything else. Now, what I'm saying is, against a discard spell, what do you do? Do you use it? You know, you reduce their chances of getting threshold. It's going to be very possible? I mean, I guess so, because like, I need a top deck to land pretty much this turn either way, and I can cast either back to basic or choke. Um, so if they hit one of those, they're kind of redundant anyway, so I guess you go ahead and get rid of the two. Um, So we top deck a land here, uh, that's not a sanctum, and we cast choke, or back to basis. They would probably want to hit the choke, I think, because they could like fetch for a basic island. Wait, no, I don't know. I don't know which is better for them to do. Probably depends on their hand. I'm sure they know best instead. They're going to gamble that I don't draw land. I guess that makes sense, because, uh, shit. Ah, shit, 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 shit. Well, hopefully they don't have it in hand. <sighs> Where are our odds? We needed one of 17 non sanctum lands, and we had two cards and about 50% chance. Was it two cards? Yeah, it was two cards. I guess we could have drawn no Gaddock Team wouldn't have done anything because we already set it out. Uh, or we already don't have we don't have some mana. Come on. I guess that was a reasonable play. Yeah. Really would have liked to draw land here. I'd really like to draw land here. Oh, damn. You know, we got like actually all the cards we want against them, but no mana. Let's see, now what do we have? Not great. Alright, uh, wait, no, that's not even right. It's 53. 53. And we had two cards drawn, so we had a 55% chance. So, slightly favored, actually. That's fine. It's like, actually just pointless right now. Well, they have it now.
Hmm. Well, isn't that unfortunate? I'm just gonna go ahead and save some time here, guys. Where are we gonna finally get a land? I don't care about that. What's I gonna do? God damn it, I don't care about that. Ah, there's the fucking land. Alright. I suppose. I mean. Hmm. What are you gonna do? Storm's really bad much. Well, that's okay, right? That's a playable card. Right? That's a commander card, I think. Magus is a couple bucks. Actually, I ended up buying one of these to test. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit. Oh, wow, that's worth more than the uh, Vegas. Is. God bless Commander. Oh, uh, man. All right, well, uh, so I think the deck performed pretty well. Um, did her finish come up at all? I don't think Gile came up at all. Invocation was good as it's been pretty much the whole time. Um, like confinement was really good, I guess. Um, we learned uh, that all drowsy stompy decks are likely to be playing uh, ceaseless hunger these days, even though, uh, yeah, again, the line between stompy and big old drowsy is kind of blurry now. Um, uh, we got it anyway. I think the deck performed pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, like, Storm. Like, even that one, like, obviously, like, Game 3 still would have been hard if we'd drawn our third land. But, like, if we'd drawn a third land, uh, like, they only had the lands I'd diamond. Like, they were tapped out. Like, um, I think they, they did have one more land drop at that point. But, um... Uh, yeah, no, I didn't think we would have had it. Um, so actually, yeah, no, yeah. Because we drained the Eye of Chaos instead of a third land. So we wouldn't have had any Eye of Chaos. So we would have played mm, probably Choke, I suppose, over back to basics. And they wouldn't be able to cast a spawn there, so who knows how their the rest of their stuff would have gone. Anyway, um, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. Signing off.